Okay, everybody, I'm, I'm glad that you're all here tonight. This is a very important webinar to ease a lot of people's minds. Charles is very fortunate to have the people around him that he has. Charles is an amazing businessman and incredible owner of AdHip Profits. And at this time, Charles, I'd like you to take the floor. Thank you very much, Ernie. Can everybody hear me? Uh, we're starting to get a pretty good turnout here. You know, I have to say that I have been so taken back by all of the comments that people have been sending to me, all the positive, helpful, inspiring words that people have been sharing, not only about ad hit profits and about what they're experiencing, but just really nice things about Taylor and about myself. And I just want to say thank you, everyone, for all that you guys have been doing, not just to build up at hit profits and to build your income as you've been referring more and more advertisers to at hit profits, but also just as, as you've been building me up as well as, as uh, just all of the encouragement. So thank you for everything. Um, some things that I wanted to kind of cover a little bit is we have had astounding growth. I mean, I am just blown away. Um, I was going to actually read um, the statistics and I logged out real quick because I was resetting my browsers thinking that maybe I was not hearing any sound because I was needing to close everything down and start back up. So please bear with me as I log back into my back office there. But I've been really astounded actually really and that's a word that I don't usually use but it has been a word I've been using more of lately. Right now, live statistics, we're at 12,558 paid members. And I don't know if any of you have ever been to Moneymaker Group and taken a look back at the very first posts because that's something that I was actually about to create a video about just the other day and and just a number of things kind of creeped up and I kind of took me away from that. but. If you go to Moneymaker Group and you look at our ad hit profits um, forum area, you'll see, can you hear me? It, it says froze. Okay, back. Okay, good. Um, you'll see that at the very, very beginning of ad hit profits, we really struggled. There's a lot of negativity. A lot of people that were saying, oh, this thing's not even going to last a week. There were people who were saying that this is never going to reach 100 members. There were people who were saying just a lot of negative things and saying that, you know, that they see this lasting maybe a few hours. But as you have seen, we're now almost to our two month mark. Almost. We are so close. And I remember when we reached our first month mark, we reached our first million dollar payout um, before before we reached our first month mark. And I just thought to myself inside, um, I want to reach our second million dollars when we reach our second month mark. And so inside my mind, I was like, okay, I'm going to push this. I'm going to drive the traffic. I'm going to talk with the leaders. I'm going to talk with everyone that I possibly can to get this to happen. And as, as you might have been following along, is we've actually now paid out over $2 million already. And I was just feeling so grateful. I was like, wow, you know, we've got over 10,000 people involved. We paid out over $2 million within two months. And then just all of a sudden, um, just come a couple of days ago, we started to really spike even more than what we had before. And so now we're actually nearing $3 million in payouts. We are actually within just $30,000 away from paying out three million dollars and I am just really amazed um, so I I'm looking at this and we're actually within thirty thousand dollars and that means actually we're gonna reach a, another million more in payouts than I was expecting by our second month mark and what that just does to me is I look back and I read those comments from the those original first beginning days those early hours of 
ad hit profits and seeing the negativity I just kind of just sit back and just I'm filled with gratitude really of not just the people that have gotten involved in ad hit profits and, but those who decided to believe in ad hit profits rather than to follow the words of those who felt that this was going to just disappear quickly and I know that within those first couple of weeks um, there were definitely some some people who thought it was just going to die any moment um, but I gotta tell you that exactly Luther we have proved them wrong and the way that this is working and the advertisers that we're having come um, I don't I don't see this as being something that will ever die and the main reason for that is as some people are wondering if it will you know if, if advertisers will ever stop I've asked advertisers if they you know what their thoughts were and they said to themselves um, no <laughs> they will never stop advertising on ad hit profits mainly because and 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 I I, I know that this can kind of sound hypey um, but they have tested out with their lead capture pages they have looked at all of the different advertising resources that they have been using and they have found that they're getting more traffic and more signups from ad hit profits than they have from any of the rest of their advertising resources and that is just a testament that ad hit profits itself does truly have a real viable service a product that's being sold that's outside of the money-making opportunity side but in of itself we already also are seeing that people are truly earning something here and that the the prices you know there's a lot of opportunities out there just like what Lois is saying here Lewis um, he's saying that the prices are lower and that's true because you know within a lot of money-making opportunities out there you'll see you know some ebook or something that they, they've got on sale for a thousand dollars it's like wait a minute <laughs> is the value of what's being sold really that much and and so that's what I really like about ad hit profits is the cost savings actually that people are able to experience here as they're advertising and getting better results than they would elsewhere and if you haven't yet tried out the banners on the website I urge you to do so because I did that myself and I gotta tell you I mean I heard some of these advertisers that were telling me that they were having really great results and I thought they were just um, stroking my ego so to speak you know just trying to make me feel good about doing good in the world but I really was actually seeing some good results from what I was advertising and you know I mean if it, if you're trying to build something just to kind of give you some hints because there's a lot of marketers out there that I believe could be getting a lot better results and what I would definitely recommend is if you haven't yet already if you're building a, an online presence if you're building a business online you really if you haven't yet already gone online full-time get yourself a Weber or a traffic wave account and get yourself a, your own website create for yourself a brand because one of the things that you'll probably notice out there are those who get involved in an opportunity first usually do better and it's not because of anything special about themselves they're just promoting first and they're promoting something that's new now here's something that you really want to keep in mind of is how many people are promoting your website how many people are promoting you if you're the one out there standing out you will attract those same types of signups into your website as these new people getting involved in new new opportunities first because you would be your own opportunity it would be an opportunity to serve and work with you so keep that in mind build a brand build yourself get yourself one of these list builders like the Aweber or traffic wave or, or something else that you can actually then have people sign up and join with you rather than something that you're building because if you're just promoting a referral link then what's going to happen for you is you're going to have to continually and I mean this is still of course any marketer is going to continue doing this anyway but you're going to have to continue to start over and market more and more I mean once when one opportunity ends you're going to have to continually go back and 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 continually rebuild from scratch that's where having your own list or your own autoresponder your own group your own team that you've developed um, you can actually now say hey look you know I have gotten involved in this opportunity I've, I've given it some test you know I've tested this out for myself 
and this is who the owner is. This is what I think about the program. I've been testing it for the last couple of weeks. It's legit. I'm getting paid. This is how fast. I mean, then people can really follow you because they're seeing you as a leader. Once when you brand yourself as a leader, you're going to actually see a lot better results through your marketing. And if you kind of plug that kind of a system or that kind of a lead capture system into your advertising on ad hit profits, you're going to see a lot better results in your income online. And that's really what this is all about is, is bringing in targeted people. Because, I mean, how many people go to Google and, and pay for AdWords? Or how many people go to Facebook and, and pay per click out on there? Or how many people go to Moneymaker Group or Talk Gold or any of the other forums or, or uh, monitor sites? All these different places that are you're, you're paying for advertising. But, I mean, how many people that are there on those sites have a photo of you on their banner or how many of these people on those sites have your leadership and if you don't think that you're a leader yet believe in yourself because it's all about mindset if you believe that you're a leader and you start acting as a leader you'll start having people follow you even if you have no one in your list right now even if you have no list whatsoever and nobody knows you or anything because I look back when I first started out online I felt like I didn't know anything and nobody knew me. And I started to realize, you know, I was watching a video um, of Mike Phils May and realized I don't know who that guy is. So nobody knew who I was back then either, but I was able to grow a downline in a business that I was promoting at the time faster than anyone else. Well, I was, well, I'll, I was actually second place in a, in a uh, referral contest back then, but I was just a beginner and I felt so confident that anybody really if they just knew those types of strategies of building a brand building your own list and following up and standing out as a leader you'll actually see a lot better results especially as you show people how much you really care about their success and that you're not just going to lead them into something again and again and again that's just going to fall apart and that now you've got your commissions who cares about their you really got to care about them and when they see that you care then they'll want to follow you even more for years and years to come. So that kind of leads me to another thing um, that I really want to stress upon within Ad Hit Profits is being a good sponsor and being loyal to your sponsor as well. If you've been brought into Ad Hit Profits by somebody, I would recommend thanking them and sticking with them as much as you possibly can. Now, if, if they're not being supportive, then I mean, one of the things that I've been at having people ask me is, hey, can you change my sponsor or something like that? And I'll find out something like, you know, so-and-so has been helping me, but my sponsor won't answer anything. They don't know anything, and they ask me just to contact support. Please, if you're a sponsor, show some responsibility for the people that you brought into this opportunity. I mean, after all, they are actually um, paying you. In, in a roundabout way, I mean directly, in, in fact, because every single purchase that they make, 10% of all their purchases go to you. So show them some kindness, so show them some respect. And I know that there's some people that have decided not to follow their sponsors anymore because of that, but stick with your sponsors. I really urge you guys, stick with your sponsor because they were the ones who, who recommended this opportunity. And if you're experiencing any sort of results or any happiness with ad hit profits, then I kind of believe that you owe it to them to continually have those commissions go to them. I really just feel like that. And I know that there's, there's families that are referring their, their husbands or wives and, and those types of things. Wouldn't it be kind of a slap in the face if your wife or your, hus or, or your husband or your cousins or someone that you've been referring decided that they were no longer going to allow you to collect on their commissions anymore. It just is a slap in the face because you are the one who shared this opportunity. So please stick with your sponsor. Now with another thing also that I mentioned just a minute ago is having sponsors say contact support. If you know, there's a lot of information actually on the website, you know, and, and especially, especially as, as we're seeing right now, there's 12,000 people, you know, almost 13,000. We're already halfway across another thousand. So 12,558 people. Imagine if all of them needed help to log in. Now, I don't expect that to happen, but there are some people that really, they ask, where's the login button? 
there, there's some of these types of people that I just wonder how much are they trying to find the answers on their own and how much are their sponsors helping them and I know that there's there's people that um, I mean especially if they have a lot of people that they've sponsored in that they don't have the ability to really contact every single one of them and kind of give them this this instruction but I believe that each member is accountable and responsible for their own account so as people have you know said I don't know how to list an ad on the website well it's not that hard in my opinion mainly because there's people who say I don't even know where to go well if you log in you'll see under the menu advertising setup and you can click on any of the ad or any of the menu options so there's a lot of people who are sending in support tickets that I believe that could be solved by just opening up your eyes just a little bit and, and really what we're seeing is because of such growth there's been a lot of people who really want to have this personal contact with the owner or with customer service and they want to test this out and it, and I don't know where all that stems from and I think that I mean I totally respect that there's been a lot of opportunities out there that have fallen that have crashed and it's very difficult to get a hold of anybody and all of this but we have a Skype group actually we've got seven of them now and it's not hard to get a hold of some people to get some support especially as we have our, our Facebook groups. What's happening for me personally, it's kind of insane. I never imagined this in a million years. But I'm getting about 300 emails a day. I'm getting about, oh, hundreds of people sending me um, support questions on my Facebook. I've got hundreds of support tickets coming in. And then I've got Skype blowing up crazy all over the place. And a lot of the questions that people are asking, they just maybe want to feel that reassuring comfort that I'm there for them because a lot of these questions I believe the information is just right there on the site I mean it's as simple as sometimes um, how much can I earn and if they just clicked on how it works then they'll know that the, if they purchase a $45 ad pack that as they click 10 ads every single day they're gonna earn up to fifty six dollars and twenty five cents on each of those ad packs I don't really believe that they need to ask that question, especially if they're deciding that they want to refer other advertisers, they're going to collect 10% of all of the commission. And so there's not really um, a need to contact support and ask those types of questions. And I know that it's important to get these answers, and that's why there is such a great frequently asked questions in there. I know there's a lot of other websites out there too that don't have very good frequently asked questions. They're kind of made up questions that nobody really, really, really wants to know. But questions like, how does vacation mode work? That's there. You know, and, and this is, so that's just an example of a lot of people that they want to know is, how, what does a vacation mean? And to me, they can find that answer very quickly if they just took a moment. Because, I mean, if you, if you multiply through, how many people we have even if it's just 30 seconds we're talking about days worth of support tickets if we took just 30 seconds every single member just asking that one question and that's assuming that it's just 30 second kind of question I want to be able to give time for the people because I'll tell you that within any system and I've worked in customer service for 10 plus years you're gonna have some glitches you're gonna have some kind of oh wow that's interesting you know especially as we work with three different processors um, I know that sometimes as we receive payments coming in from Solid Trust Pay, those payments somehow don't get posted every single time 100%. There's maybe 1% or less that somehow does they don't get posted. I want to make sure that I'm available for people who have real things that need help with rather than just people who just are I mean lack of better words, maybe lazy just to go to the frequently asked questions or actually just read the website. And and uh, and I don't want to come off like I'm a jerk or anything like that, but I really want people to feel empowered to find the answers for themselves because there are answers all over the website. Throughout the forum, we've got the common solutions to the problems. There's so many things that I just, I love having contact with all of you. And I don't want to have this come off in, the, in a wrong way, but I mean, I really just want you to get your answers the fastest. And if there's already a way for you to get your answer, then please take advantage of it and that way it gives me the ability to help those who are really ha you know they bumped into some kind of glitch and they really need to get some help um, 
So enough with that. Now there's there's also been some people that have voiced some concern. And what we've got on the call tonight is John Rock. John Rock is a compliance officer and I don't know how much information um, I, I really should say about him other than he really knows his stuff and he's got a lot of experience in the industry when it comes to um, the laws. He's worked with a, a number of different companies and, and has been there as a compliance officer for them. And I'm not going to name any of those by name. If he wants to, then absolutely. Um, but as far as he is, he does come with a very strong legal background. He was also a, a police officer from the best I remember. And what I really like about John is he's very down to earth. He's a straight shooter. And he'll, he'll, he'll tell me exactly what it is. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'll have him on here in just a minute here. Um, but you're, you're going to hear his, in his voice that he is one of authority. He's one who has knowledge. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to the laws. Now, there's been a lot of people that what their concern is right now, and I've been getting a lot of people, and I mean probably oh, anywhere between 50 to 100 people probably a day, saying, I love ad hit profits, but how long is this going to last before it gets shut down by the government? And I can respect your concern because, you know, there's been other opportunities that have been shut down by governments before, and it's because they've actually been breaking the law. And so w who I have on, on the call tonight is John Rock, and he is um, amazing. I want to go ahead and bring him on. I'll see. How is everybody so tonight? So we actually, um, as of tomorrow morning, first of all, um, are going just to one correction. Hello. No, I have never been a police officer. So, um, absolutely. I've been involved as a, as a compliance officer for a little over 23 years now. But I've been involved in the direct sales industry for longer than Charles has been alive. We'll leave it at that. Uh, what, what has impressed me the most over the last 10 or 12 days that I've gotten to know Charles and we've had many conversations, uh, everything that we have talked about, Charles has been very adamant about making it better for the members, making it long term, making sure that everything he does is compliant uh, and we've had many hours of conversations and I'm really pleased and privileged to be a part of it so with that though I want to get on and talk about because a lot of people seem to have the opinion that you know is this real and all of those things and I, I just wanted to go over what the law says about our industry and it's really pretty simple. There are basically six rules that we have to follow. But before we get into that, let's just look at slide number two there. And I want to make it clear what my role in, in the company will be and is. First of all, to protect AdHit's profits from any form of liability by assuring that we're totally compliant and I think everybody on this call wants that to happen and um, what I've seen so far and the work I've done so far and I'm going to do a lot more of uh, what pleases me most is Charles wants to make sure that everything we do is totally compliant I don't always get that from owners of companies and it's it's really quite a pleasant experience Secondly, my job is to protect the principals, officers, and directors of the company from any form of liability by making sure that we follow global compliance guidelines and regulations. Number three, and for most of you on the call, this is probably the most important one to you, to protect the opportunity that's afforded to everyone who's an independent contractor me member and all of the advertisers that are associated with that hits profits. And number four, to ensure that the company, its employees, its members, and its advertisers are in total compliance with all federal, provincial, territory, or municipal laws governing our industry. How do you do that? By working with you, the affiliates, and working with Charles, and educating members on the laws and how every one of us can help to ensure that compliance through edu ensure that compliance through education and enforcement. 
Now, if we move on to slide three, let's, uh, very simply, there are six simple compliance guidelines that are pretty much international in scope and that are enforced in just about every country I've ever worked in and I've had the privilege in this industry of working in 19 countries um, all over Europe, UK, and of course Canada, and United States, and Mexico. And what we want to do is make sure that we follow those six simple guidelines and I'm going to go through them one by one. So you may see some amendments to some of the terms and conditions, policies and procedures because some of them we have to revise to make sure that we reflect the guidelines. Why? Very simply put, because it's the law. And if we're going to stay in business, we have to follow the regulations. And there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that Charles is 100% totally committed to make sure that we follow regulations and meet all compliance standards. Slide number four. Let's look at law number one, um, or one of the regulatory compliance issues that just about every regulator in every country looks at. They want to know, and they dictate, that all direct sales, network marketing companies, affiliate programs, and internet programs must offer real products and or real services. I don't have to tell you guys on the line. I've been listening to some of you. I've been talking to some of you. And there's no question that Ad Hit Profits offers its members real opportunity. There's no question that there are real advertisers. There's no question that there are real services. And there's certainly no question that there's real profit sharing. Not many companies can say that. And for a company that is only two months old, absolutely phenomenal. Charles, you've done a great job. Uh, and, you know, I really look forward to getting more done. Law number two, and then next slide on slide five. What regulatory compliance, compliance enforcement agencies throughout the world specifically prohibit the act of paying commissions and bonuses based solely on what some refer to as a headhunter fee, which is attached, <coughs> excuse me, only to the act of recruiting of other people into any program. The Ad Hits Profits program rewards members based on their personal sales and efforts and on the sales generated by their team and their advertising. Commissions and bonuses are based on the sales generated through the company on a daily basis. Because, you know, if all we were doing is signing other people up and not moving product and not making sales, well, there wouldn't be a, a program here. There wouldn't be any longevity. But that's not the case at all. Nothing happens and no one is paid until unless the sales are made. And the Ad Hits Profit program follows. And that's important to follow the program. You know, I heard Charles as he was talking in the beginning about and we've talked about it on a few of our telephone conversations about getting inundated with questions and I spent two days going through the site checking out the policies and procedures and checking out some of the uh, most frequently asked questions and the answers and so on and so forth and again I, I've been involved in companies that have been around for a year or more that didn't have that many specific and pertinent questions and answers as I've seen on, on this program already. What we have to remember is that most regulators dictate that companies and their independent contractor members and employees must not make income claims other than the published typical income of a typical participant in the plan. Basically, it's unlawful for the company, its employees, its independent contractor members to imply or make any guarantee of income to any person they're trying to refer into the program. Making income claims other than the typical income stated in the ad hit profits, terms and conditions, policies and procedures 
may be considered a form of misrepresentation in some country, countries. In certain, certain circumstances, making those claims or promises may even be construed as fraudulent misrepresentation and a violation of the criminal code in certain countries. Now, I'm not, I'm certainly not a fear monger, but I just think it's important that people know these guidelines and, and that they understand that not only will making these kind of claims get the company in trouble, but the individuals making the claims are also liable and can be charged. Uh, so again, it gets back to educating people what can be said, what, can, what can't be said. Now if we go to slide number seven, we started here and I, we worked on, I worked on this uh, presentation today. Charles and I need to sit down and we've got to go through some numbers in order to come up with the actual declaration of typical income of a typical participant. And you see it there, ad hit profits, LLC makes or implies no guarantees regarding income. Our estimate of what the typical participant is likely to earn, provided they follow the program, is approximately X amount of dollars per month. Charles and I have to go through that. There's a formula that has to be used that the regulators insist on. Uh, and we'll probably get that done tomorrow, so we'll be able to finish that declaration tomorrow. But a participant, for the purposes of this es estimate of income, includes participants who make a sale or sales of the company's products and services within a one-month period. <coughs> the typical figure is representative of the smallest range of compensation expected to be earned by over 50% of all participants in the plan. Ad hit profits does not guarantee the income of any participant in its compensation plan, and incomes earned will be in direct proportion to the amount of time and effort put forth by individual participants. It's that simple. There can be no guarantee uh, of income. I mean, you could tell somebody that all you did is click 10 times a day and made $10,000 a day, but that's not the whole story. And that's why that's dangerous. And where many companies get in trouble with regulators is when distributors start making claims that they really shouldn't be making. And uh, the surest way to get the attention of a regulator is to start waving around big, big buck claims uh, that cannot be justified. So in the future, you're going to see these kind of things added, such as the typical income of a typical participant. Let me just explain what typical means. Uh, does not mean average. It, it means typical. In other words, we don't take, we do not take into consideration the highest earners in the company because, quite frankly, that's not typical. We also don't take in the person that joined yesterday because they haven't had a time yet to establish a record. So we have to look at the charts, do some calculations and come up with the formula that is going to show us what is most typical. I don't know what that number is yet. I doubt that Charles knows what that number is yet because we haven't gone through the formulation process. We will probably do that tomorrow and get back to you and, and share that information as quickly as we can. Another law, you know, number four, I shouldn't call it law, but another thing that regulators look for and frown upon is, if you go to slide eight, forcing participants in a program to purchase product as a condition of part participation in the plan. That's simply not permitted. You cannot force people to buy product and you cannot insist that they do. It has to be on a voluntary basis. And you'll see in the revised terms and conditions, policies, and procedures that we'll be adding a clause that sounds something like this. No purchase, no person is required to purchase any products or sales aids as a condition of participation to become a registered independent contractor member with ad hit profits to receive commissions, bonuses, or any other remuneration under the marketing plan. 
any purchase of products or sales aids or participating participation in the company's auto renewal programs are entirely optional. The only mandatory purchase required is the member registration fee. Members can immediately begin to earn money by referring others and clicking on the advertisements. And that's pretty simple. But again, it goes one step further when you go to Regulation 4, or pardon me, Regulation 5 on slide 9. You know, it is unlawful for companies to expect or to demand that independent contractor members purchase unreasonable amounts of inventory. That practice is commonly referred to in the industry as front-end loading. Now, we really don't have inventory except that our advertisers, but I already know that there are a few people out there that are trying to sign up other people into the program and telling them to put in a thousand or two thousand or three thousand. Um, and some countries will consider that unreasonable. And it's something that we have to be very, very careful of, that we're not getting people involved at a level higher than what they can afford. And based on my conversations with Charles over the last 10 days, um, you know, Ad Hits and Charles encourages its members to purchase only what they can afford and not to overextend themselves. I mean, the whole goal of getting people involved in this program, this real opportunity, is for our members to reduce and eliminate debt and then to supplement or replace their current income while building a real financial future for themselves and their family. And sometimes we can overload people at the beginning, even though we mean well, uh, but not everybody has the same work ethic. And the more work they have to do and the higher investment, uh, that's a word that I shouldn't be using, the higher purchase they make at the beginning is, is going to be one of the factors that determines just how well they do. And seeing as I almost slipped with that word investment, uh, I can remember the first day I talked to Charles and I started looking through the website. Um, I, I happened to click on one of the ads that were on the page and the reason I clicked on it, it was something along the lines of invest 5,000, triple your money, something like that. And it was my first time on the site. And the first thing I said to Charles, well, there's a red flag. We, the minute we start throwing the word investment or invest around, we will attract the attention of the Securities Commission, and rightfully so. Um, this is not an investment. You're purchasing a service, and you're doing something to get paid. You're making sales, and you're looking at adver advertisements. Uh, so in no way can it be construed as an investment. And please, that is one word that needs to come out of everybody's vocabulary as soon as possible. So moving on to the next slide. It's unlawful. I think I missed a slide there, uh, but or I've misnumbered them and putting it together too quickly. So moving on to slide 10. Number six. Compliance regulators all over the world dictate that companies must offer a fair, equitable, and reasonable refund or cancellation policy. Members and advertisers with ad hits, ad hit profits may cancel their membership and or advertising commitments with ad, ad hit profits at any time. Because the company pays its member based on a profit sharing basis daily, there can be no offer refund on the purchase because the minute a sale is made, the software begins to calculate the payouts of commissions and in most, if not all cases, provided members have clicked a minimum of 10 banner ads a day, members will retrieve their original cost and see reasonable profits quickly. And, you know, Charles and I talked at length about this and, you know, at first I thought, well, gee, how are we going to do that? We're supposed to, you know, we're supposed to be able to offer a refund policy. 
but I've never heard anybody ask for a refund after they've already got their money back. So I, I think we're pretty safe to assume that we can carry forward with that. And last, hopefully I'm not going too fast here. Let's just look at the summaries that we talked about and the questions to meet those six criteria. Does Ad Hits Profit offer real products and or services? The answer is an emphatic yes. Are commissions and bonuses based on personal and sales and team sales of real products and services and not on the basis of sponsoring or recruiting? Again, yes. Does the company provide a typical income of typical participant declaration? Yes, we will be. That will be added in the next few days. Are the participant members forced to purchase products as a condition of participation? Absolutely not. Are participant members forced to purchase an unreasonable amount of product as a condition of participating in the plan? Not with ad hit profits. Does ad hit profits offer a reasonable cancellation? Yes, and with no questions asked, members may cancel at any time. Not sure why they'd want to, but they can. So I've just gone through those 11 slides pretty quickly and we'll be polishing that up and probably making that available to you. Um, in closing, I just want to try and give you a bit of, uh, Charles gave you a bit of my background. As he said, I've been doing this for many, many years. I've been a compliance officer uh, on a consulting basis with a number of com uh, companies and I've also been a chief of compliance for some major companies as an employee, member of the corporate team and I've been doing this consulting work for almost 23 years now. And it always amazes me that when I get some clients who ask me to come in and make sure they're compliant and then when I go to them and tell them where I see challenges and make recommendations to them, they don't listen. Uh, I can honestly tell everybody on this call that of all the conversations Charles and I have had in Skype back and forth, every single thing that I pointed out to him that I thought needed correcting was corrected. Every single suggestion I made to make it better, he's done. And he asks real questions and demonstrates a genuine concern for all of the members. This is something that uh, is going to be around for a long, long time. And the best way to stay around for a long, long time is to simply follow those simple compliance guidelines. Some of you on the call may know me. Uh, I've developed this reputation uh, in the industry as being Mr. Compliance. Uh, I've also been called the Terminator the exterminator, the sales reduction department, etc., etc., And that's usually by people that we try to deal with and deal with as fairly and as equitably as we can. But when it comes to compliance, there has to be almost a zero tolerance if people continue, continually break the rules. Because as I said to Charles, I, I've got some simple uh, guidelines about working with me and, and with working with the companies. And the first guideline is no one, none of us, has the right to compromise the integrity of the company. Yes, Charles may be the owner of the company, and even the owner, its employees, its consultants, its distributors, its affiliates, its members, no one has the right to compromise the integrity of the, the company. Number two, what I suggest to people is that they never compromise the integrity of the opportunity. Because the minute they start compromising the integrity of the opportunity, it affects the company, the employees, and every single member on this call, and every single member that is involved with ad hits, and every single advertiser that's involved. 
So there's absolutely no need to embellish, change, or whatever uh, the opportunity. All of you are on this call because you know it works. You've experienced it works. Uh, listening to Charles earlier and the kind of commissions that are being paid out on a daily basis, obviously it works. Therefore, there's no need to embellish or compromise the integrity of the company or the opportunity. Thirdly, please don't ever compromise the integrity of the product or services when you're explaining it to other people. There is no reason to exaggerate or embellish the fact. The opportunity, the products, and the company are all there to make sure that we have longevity, that the company remains stable, and the company is going to be profitable. And what it boils down to is this. What I say to people all the time is number four, that number four guideline of working with me and what I try to instill in companies is never compromise your personal integrity in the course of doing business. Because quite frankly, the minute you compromise your own integrity, you've already compromised the integrity of the company, the opportunity, and the products or services. Uh, moving forward, Charles and I will be talking again tomorrow and planning, uh, doing a little more planning. I hope this presentation gives a reasonably good explanation. Uh, I found out I was going to be on this webinar uh, late last night and I just prepared the presentation today um, and tried to tailor make it to what we're doing with Ad Hits. Um, and you know, I'll be available, I'll be on Skype and I will be uh, working very closely with Charles to make sure that we remain compliant. With that, I'd like to thank Charles and thank everybody for their time. Go ahead, Charles. Thank you very much, John. Are you there, Charles? Okay. Yeah, so can, can everyone hear me again? Thank you so much, John. I, I really appreciate the, the time that you have taken this evening. Um, now, I know that uh, you were going to give a short notice, weren't you? <laughs> Last <laughs> night, like you were saying. So you did a really great job putting this together. Thank you very much for your time. Now, were there any questions about compliance that you guys had after that? I think that he pretty much covered it all, um, showing that we're fully compliant. And I think that even just, and I, I'll probably want to talk, talk with John a little bit more about this, is that uh, the common person, by just... Um, are they're coming in for, with $45, you know, that's the common person. And uh, that as they're just clicking their 10 ads a day, they're going to get up to the 40 or $56.25 on their share position. I mean, that's kind of the common person, the kind of common income. It's, it's nothing outlandish or crazy, but there's definitely people who take it to a whole new level. And that's definitely for sure. Now, were there any other, were there any questions then for anybody that, that you had for, It looks like, he, John, thank you again. It looks like all of the questions were handled and, and definitely through that slideshow, I think that everything was just really taken care of really well. Um, now, before we close the call this evening, I wanted to find out if there were any questions that you had for me, anyone in this room. With that, Charles, I'm just trying to figure out how to turn off my mic. The 10 so. banners that we have to click everywhere, how much of that cost, let me go back up to that, how much does that cost advertise? Well, there's not really a, a pay to click. What that is, is um, that's $45, and that's giving you a direct relisting and a thousand visitors to your website. So that's what you're paying for, for the $45. So how much does that equate per click that you're receiving? Well, you could just take the $45 and divide that by a thousand, and that comes out to being about four cents per click. So you're going to be seeing about four cents per click there with that advertising. So we're losing sound quality. Am I losing sound? Can you guys hear me? All right. Is it working now? Is it working? All right. Great, great. 
All right. All right. Now that it's working again, what questions do we have? So you'll be limited from the amount of funds that you can try from solid trust pay. Um, I I haven't see I I noticed that they've lifted my limitations. I'm I'm now a corporate account holder with solid trust pay. You might have noticed that the fees are a little bit higher than maybe somewhere that you might be paying elsewhere. So it's actually a corporate account so there shouldn't be any limitations at least I haven't bumped into the, any um, if if you guys I mean I've I don't know I've, I've seen some pretty decent sized payouts go out so it doesn't seem to me that there's any kind of um, limitation will the LLC certificate be posted on the site well I'm being told that they're gonna send me a binder so I don't know how much of that would want to be displayed on the site but um, I, if there's a way to be able to display some of that kind of paperwork I don't I don't mind scanning it and and having it available now as far as pays uh, I'm hearing some rumors today I haven't been able to validate any of them I know that my account manager at um, pays uh, I just got some of the word of these rumors around three o'clock my time which my my account manager is in Canada and about two hours ahead of me and she usually gets off of work by six o'clock and so I haven't been able to confirm any of that information I have not heard of any kind of PESA issues I know that for myself I've been able to log in just fine with PESA we're still seeing PESA purchases coming back and forth I've never I don't know. I mean, I know that there's a lot of rumors flying around the rumor mill out there about PESA and Solid Trust Pay because of Liberty Reserve. And what I wanted to explain is that, it, it, I mean, and I don't know what's going on with PESA because I haven't been able to confirm what's going on there, but I know that I've been able to confirm with Solid Trust Pay that, and I've been able to confirm this also in the past about PESA, um, but I wonder, you know, especially as I'm hearing some things in the last couple of hours that something's going on with with PESA. Has anyone bumped into anything with PESA? Now, Joe, I don't know. I mean, you're saying that the problem is that there's no new accounts allowed. I don't know if there's maybe somebody who has attempted to sign up. I, I think that maybe, the, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm able to log in just fine. I'm in the United States. I have not had any experience. I mean, I'm not experiencing any problems. I've looked over their blog. I've looked over their Twitter. I'm not seeing any problems at all about accounts having any problems so I mean I, I definitely would recommend that as you're having any of these types of um, rumors come across that you definitely look into them looking at the PESA official on Twitter I'm not seeing anybody messaging them complaining about not being able to sign up you know I mean and there's there's people that have questions about accounts and blogs and answers. I mean, you can go to their blog. There's nothing about being shut down or anything. They have additional things going on with adding additional services and those types of things. I mean, I just kind of look at this and say, I don't know if any of that is plausible. I'm not seeing anything about PESA. I mean, there's maybe in the UK. I, I'm hearing some things like that in the UK. And... I remember that's been going on, gosh, almost two years with the UK, but I'm not seeing anything like that going on in the United States. I'll, I'll definitely be doing some research into that and make sure that everything is good going forward. Um, but definitely when it comes to, you know, I, I, I want to kind of touch upon real quick before we end the, the call because this has also been a common concern that people have about the payment processors. It's very important that you, you understand. I mean, there's a lot of rumors out there because of Liberty Re Reserve being shut down. Now, Liberty Reserve, it's important to understand why they were shut down. It's not because they were a payment processor. No, it, that's not what it is. People need to understand that Liberty Reserve themselves were stealing money from people, stealing money from their own merchant accounts, member accounts. They were laundering money illegally. Them, their company and not only that, but they made it very easy for the fraudsters and the hackers to get away with committing crimes, not against, not just against just regular common folk, but against people who are legit, you know, but also um, 
you know, there's the money laundering, drug trafficking, um, child pornography. I mean, you start to look at all these types of things that it's like, Yes, absolutely they needed to be shut down. And not only because of the crimes themselves were doing and engaged in and very much a part of, but they were also aiding other criminals and fraudsters to get away with their crimes. If you're looking at, for example, solid trust pay, and, and I urge you to really take a look over their terms and, their terms and conditions, and the same thing with PESA. I mean, if you go ahead and look at Solid Trust Pays, um, and on their site it's, it's called, let's see, User Agreement. When you go to the User Agreement, you'll find that they do not accept any of the things that Liberty Reserve was shut down for. There, there is no pornography. There is no drugs. You can't have any. There's, they list all these illegal things, and pretty much they say, and anything else restricted or illegal, you can't do anything illegal. And they actually prosecute the criminals as, as much as they can. They go after them. You know, and that's where Liberty Reserve, they are completely the opposite. They were helping them get away with it by not letting you know who the person was that just stole your money. So, I mean, here's the thing with um, Liberty, um, Solid Trust Pay is they have the restricted activities. They do take legal action. And not only that, but they also have strong anti-money laundering policies. And from the back end as a merchant, I've seen the kind of strong policies that they have. And they do suspend the funds, and they do take back funds, and, and, and they're very good at making sure to hold people accountable for what's going on. So, I mean, if you look at their user agreement, they're very strong when it comes to those types of things. So you're not going to have to worry about solid trust pay disappearing. There's a lot of rumors out there that they're not licensed or they don't have the registrations and things like that. No, they really, really do. And I know that I've, I'm just saying that for myself, but I've done the research. I found this out. And, and they actually, for quite some time, used to have it displayed on their website. Um, it's, it's not there that I can see now, but um, it is still in full force. And their, their registration number, and I can't find it right now, but I do know that they are fully registered in in Canada and not only that but they are fully compliant and one thing that I just want to drive home is Zeke Rewards if anyone remembers that opportunity I never was a part of it but they were shut down by the United States government and they were fully compliant with the United States government Salt Trust Pay was very compliant at ensuring to get all those funds over to the government and and help work with the government in in taking down Zeke so because I just kind of look at that and say to myself, you know, if, if the United States government was going to shut down solid trust pay, they would have. But they were working together, actually, through that whole Zeke ordeal. So I don't see that there's any problem whatsoever that we're going to be experiencing with solid trust pay. Now, I would, I, would, I would love to get some more information. If there's people out there that have information about PESA, um, if you would, you know, send that through the moderators in the, in the group and the forums. Um, so that I can be able to kind of review that information because I do love to learn and I do want to understand what's going on. I'm not hearing anything from PESA themselves. Like I said, Twitter, you'd, if, because of how big PESA is, I believe that you'd be seeing it explode all over Twitter. I'm not seeing anything there. I'm not seeing anything throughout Google. I don't know. There's probably just people that are just in forums. I don't know. I mean, if you've personally been trying to sign up, with PESA and it's telling you we're sorry we're blocking you out because you're from the United States I would be very interested to know about that and easy bonds just to let you know one of our future webinars just like how John was on here tonight um, someone from easy bonds from from their corporate is actually going to be on one of our next calls to explain to you what easy bonds is the kind of benefits that you get being an easy bonds member that far exceeds any of the other processors. The fee itself is a low flat fee. It's just two dollars. You know, instead of being a, a, a rolling scale of a percentage plus some additional cents, like 50, 59 cents or anything like that. Um, right now, Easy Bonds website is down. I've been asking them for more information on, on what's going on. Actually, I just tested it just now. It is up. It is up and running and it's working. Everything's there. So if you've been 
panicked or worried about easy bonds it's back it's up and just as strong as ever and, and just to let you know there's easy bonds is something that is new for a lot of us online it's new for me personally but I've done some background research into them they've actually been in business for over 10 years and they have had you know a lot of really great commendations come to me about what kind of service that they provide and 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 how fast and how friendly and easy and and so I mean I definitely would invite anyone who's curious about it to check it out especially as we're gonna have some people on the call one of these next weeks I don't know if it's gonna be next week or the following um, but someone from easy bonds themselves will be on the call to explain everything that's going on with easy bonds what you can expect and actually there's been someone from them from their corporate testing out our system and putting together kind of a step-by-step -step of how to use easy bonds with ad hit profits and kind of step-by-step -step also as far as um, how to add funds how to withdraw and those types of things just to try to make it a lot easier on everyone that's involved here at ad hit profits now as far as there's people that ask questions what about e um, OK pay what I found out with OK pay is that any kind of credit card purchase that comes through their site they actually hold their funds for up to 90 days so what that means is those funds are frozen I wouldn't be able to use them and and what is important with our revenue share model is that we would have those funds available immediately because people will then be able to withdraw them immediately that's that's the way that I have it set up I want to make sure that everyone gets paid now pioneer the thing that I want to say about adding additional processors I'm not really aiming at adding anything additional and the main reason why is because anything outside of PESA or solid trust pay really is just too small when dealing with with this industry um, net teller the thing is is from what I've been able to understand with net tellers they're actually not very used very often um, there's a major website that uses them if you're familiar with them neobucks I've been speaking with them and found out that about one or two percent of all of their members use net teller and from what I've understood also is that it's not available for for people from the United States to sign up so with such a large industry and such a small percentage using that processor I think that it would not really benefit members and would cause maybe what I mean here's the thing is if all of the revenues that are coming in that we're sharing are coming in through let's say solid trust pay and PESA and easy bonds and I introduce something else that's small then what's going to happen when somebody who's using that smaller processor requests a payout well, all of the funds that are coming in that we're sharing with them are actually in a whole different processor so that's why I'd rather um, keep just to the processors that we have available especially since most of the funds are right now coming in through um, solid trust pay and pays and we're seeing an increase of um, people using easy bonds to make purchases on the website you know as far as when it comes to the earnings I would I would probably kind of just focus that again to the frequently asked questions and and not just the frequently asked questions but also our forum there's the common problems and solutions it does ask it does answer that question when it comes to um, what's going on with my earnings it's not consistent those types of things is remember this is a legal revenue share which means that you're actually splitting in real profits that are coming in actual advertising sales on the site so when you're asking me can we count on a certain amount of earnings each day I can't really even say or guarantee or give any kind of expectation of what the future will bring but I do know from the back end that we do have some really strong leaders that are coming on board and they're they're getting busy with promoting pretty big pretty far and wide and, and they've got teams that are really large so I can expect that we're going to start seeing some continued growth but can I guarantee that and can I say what the amount of earnings that you're going to be expecting on your account I really can't because I have you know just you know to remain compliant um, but you're going to throughout time because it is real sales revenues coming in you're going to see some ups you're going to see some downs and that fluctuation really shouldn't scare anybody I think what that really should do is give you confidence and feel that um, 
that peace knowing that this is real. You know, I mean, just think about the people who get involved in a Ponzi scheme. And, and the reason why I even bring that up is because, you know, if you're familiar with Bernie Madoff, Madoff, I believe is his name, he was continually projecting greater growth even as there was a down economy. And, and people were getting really concerned. And so as there were some concerns and, and outside people looking into this, it, people wanting to withdraw their funds, things like that. I mean, that's what crashes whole Ponzi and, and, and causes a devastation to a lot of people. So I'm not going to ever claim anything from the future, especially since that does kind of cross into some lines that uh, would make this possibly not compliant. So, so hopefully I don't... You know, especially as you get to understand what ad hit profits is all about, I don't want you to try to predict what tomorrow will bring, but just kind of take what today is and and what the past was, and and uh, I don't know, kind of leave it at that. <laughs> Hope for a good tomorrow, I guess. Any other questions before we get off the call tonight? And and just to kind of reiterate, the the more that you recommend our advertising services, the better, because then that means more companies, more businesses are going to start to see, hey, look, what's going on over here with that hit profits? I'm hearing all these recommendations. I'm going to try it out. And and the really great thing actually about our services is is those people, there are people who have come to the website who have said, nah, I don't believe it, but you know what? I'm going to test it out. And they say, wow, you know, and now we're seeing more people not not just testing it, but now they have become believers and repeat customers. Um, now when it comes to you know, I'm seeing Bob in here saying, please take off my IP protection. I want you to recognize that I don't know if you're really Bob. This is just a public forum. I don't know. Imagine if a hacker was in here asking for me to lower your security. You know, you've set it up on your account. You check the checkbox. If you have set up IP protection and you're having any problems, please follow the guidelines. Follow the steps to get added in there because I don't know if you're a hacker and I don't want to give the hacker control over your account and if I follow someone so just please please understand that I'm not gonna just lower down people's defenses because they've asked me to do that I, I get confused because I, I was actually on a conference call actually yesterday with Rui and and Rui I believe is in here and he actually while I was on the call with him he received this, he, he needed to update his payment processor, and I immediately thought, oh no, we're going to bump into a problem, but no, he he clicked on the link, he logged in, he was able to change it. I don't know what was the problem with other people, but it seems to me that the problem is not within the system. It is something to do with your local settings somewhere. And I've been trying to troubleshoot and interview people. Hey, what browser do you have? Are you, do you have the most up-to-date browser? Do you have any kind of add-ons? Disable them. Um, I, I've been trying to do a lot of troubleshooting. I can't detect what it is. It seems to me that some of the people that are having the problems are maybe on um, Safari or Internet Explorer. I don't really know. Um, I think Rui was on Firefox. He got right in without any problem. I really don't, I don't know what could be causing the problem, but you might try just using a different browser. Um, somebody said that they went to a computer with Windows 7 and it worked. I don't know if it's, I don't know. I, I really don't know what could be causing this, but my programmer, we've been doing a lot of research, especially as we've been growing. Like I said, we're over 12,000 members now. We're starting to see maybe, you know, six to 10 different support tickets a day about being unable to get in to, because of this and all I can say is as long as when you make those changes if your IP address changes and you immediately go to your email and you click that link inside the email and log in from that link you're gonna most likely get right in now if you've made an attempt more than once then you wanna make sure that you're using the most recent link and I know that sometimes that most recent link goes to your spam folder and, in, and sometimes what people have found is as they've been frustrated, they've been making multiple attempts, they're actually back by just one email. Um, that, that's been something that someone else has, has dis determined as well, is that they were constantly behind by one email because they're waiting. And as they were waiting for that new email to come in, they made the request again. And then they clicked the newer link, which was actually the previous newer link. 
I, I think you, you get what I'm saying. But another person, actually, they bumped into this that they were using the robo form. And the robo form, what that was doing was actually changing the pin code. And they didn't realize that. And not only was it changing the pin code, but they also had reset their password since they had um, entered all their RoboForm information. So it was actually entering in the wrong password. So that's been something that has been detected. Um, people have been entering in a transaction pin rather than um, using the pin that's actually already entered in there. But I, I spoke with someone earlier tonight, and she was giving me a play-by-play everything that was going on and still not able to get in. So if there are changes that need to be made, like a payment processor, the great thing about Ad Hit Profits is it, if you're going to be using Solid Trust Pay, for example, to withdraw, you're going to have to use Solid Trust Pay to make at least one purchase. And what that then does for me is if you're telling me that you can't add your processor, then what I can do is actually go and check your most recent purchase and say okay here's your processor here's the account that you use to make your payment and I can go ahead and update that from your history but because there are so many people I do always recommend that people figure it out and, and make those changes on their own that way I'm not having to manually change 12,000 people's different payment processors at any given time because that can take a lot of time okay now Isabel it looks like you were asking a question um, what was your question? Charles, can I use Solid Trust Pay and Pays on the same account? Yes, Junior. If you're making purchases from both, then you can withdraw to both. Are auto refreshers allowed? I would say you're going to probably bump into, because with auto refreshers, see, with my host, I've got, you know, block DOS protection, and so that might trigger that. I know there's been some people that have accidentally triggered. Um, their own IP being blocked, and I've gone in and and, and uh, restored their IP address again. So just be careful. Where's the profit coming from, Isabella? I definitely respect your concern, and I would certainly recommend clicking on the how it works because right there it outlines where all of the revenues are coming from, directory listings that are being purchased on the website, um, the forum advertising services, the banners, all the banners that you see on the website have been purchased by advertisers everything on the website has been purchased by somebody there's not really any free service so everything that's there has been purchased there's only one purchase that has a revenue share associated with it and so because of that all of these other additional services it's like having multiple streams of revenue go through one outlet um, and then there's account conveniences such as the vacation mode the share auto repurchase and then also Easy Bonds, they share their transaction fees with Ad Hit Profits, which goes straight into the revenue share pool. Anytime somebody makes a purchase or a withdrawal through Easy Bonds is now adding actually to the revenue share pool. All right, well, definitely thank you all for being here. Definitely, I recommend if you have any further questions that haven't been answered here to look over the How It Works page, look over the Frequently Asked Questions, and take a look in the forum and see if you might be able to find your answer in there. And then if you really still can't, then take a look. You know, I know that we've got our moderators here from Skype. Um, we've also got a Facebook group that you can go to and, and ask some questions. We want to make sure that your answers are, are found. Um, but definitely try your best to look on the website and, and explore and find those answers because with so many people, it, it would, I mean, if everybody just had that one question, especially if it could be answered on the website, it can just really become overwhelming. And uh, I just really appreciate everyone who is already looking at the website. And I know that pretty much 99% of the members already are doing that. So thank you, everyone, for being at Hit Profits and for being here. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.